<clears throat> Thank you. Initially, uh, you suggested, uh, or at least I was suggested, to speak about the future of the euro, but I think you've started in an entirely different conversation, and I think it would not make sense to start uh, discussing the future of the euro. I mean, let's stick to this uh, discussion. Uh, I have uh, a number of, uh, of agreements with, with you uh, on, on what you've, you've said, and, and also significant disagreement. Um, I think um, let's, let's start with the, the agreements. Uh, clearly, um, there are many unanswered questions about this crisis. Um, I'm struck by the fact that, uh, for the reason that we perfectly understand, uh, policymakers have moved quickly towards uh, uh, introducing fixes without the uh, debate uh, on the causes of the crisis uh, having reached uh, conclusions or at least having clarified sufficiently. So uh, all what has been uh, introduced at the, the G20 uh, about, um, you know, first uh, regulatory and tax havens, in fact more tax than regulatory, uh, but let, let's assume this was regulatory also, and then uh, about the, 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 the reforms um, introduced by, by the Financial Stability Board and the, the institutional reform, and then the discussion on bonuses. Um, all that is uh, taking specific aspects. Uh, well, I think some good decisions were, were, were taken, but I don't think that uh, the decision by, by any uh, in, any significant measure, address the, the whole range of, of what is now uh, at stake after this, this crisis. Uh, the discussion must be much broader. And it's interesting and, and worrying that, in fact, there has been consensus on some solutions without having a consensus on, on what uh, is behind. And, you know, another way to put some of your, 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 uh, your question would be to ask, is the macro dimension part of the story, or is it purely a micro? Uh, is it purely a matter of regulation, or is it also a matter of, of macroeconomics? Um, and here we don't have agreement at all, uh, because the, uh, the approach so far has been, it's mainly, if not exclusively, uh, micro, it's, it's regulation. Uh, but in part, this was because the Chinese didn't want to have the discussion on global imbalances because global imbalances, they perceived this as being a way to put the responsibility for the crisis on them. And therefore, this discussion did not take place initially at the, the G20. And at the same time, uh, the discussion on the responsibility of monetary policy in the crisis was not really uh, you know, part of the overall discussion. Uh, and the response to that hasn't been uh, very clear. So I have some agreement here. Um, uh, I think also that, in a way, there are some deeper issues that, uh, that those uh, we've, we've been uh, discussing so far in the crisis. I mean, you can go in different directions. Uh, one being, you know, what extent, for example, do you want to, to make a link between issues of distribution of income in the U.S. and uh, the nature of the financial problem the U.S. has been facing with the subprime crisis, but there are many other dimensions uh, that you can dig deeper uh, into, into the, the, the causes of the crisis. Uh, third, I would certainly agree that the, the, you know, the, the PR of the central banks vis-à-vis -vis the academic community is uh, sophisticated and effective. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, central banks have... Um, in a way, uh, the new power of central bank has emerged from uh, a number of uh, theses that have emerged from economic research uh, about uh, the, the, the weaknesses of the previous policy framework, and therefore, the, 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 let's say, the, the independent central bank devoted to price stability is a kind of, a, of creation of the academic community, or at least it has a significant uh, support in, in, in academic research, and therefore central banks are, are very keen on, on keeping a strong link with the academic community, and obviously, you know, human beings are human beings, and so this can introduce biases. Um, I very much like the, the comparison with ecosystems. Uh, actually, it was made uh, very eloquently by the uh, man in charge of financial stability of the, at the Bank of England, um, making the comparison between the financial system and ecosystems or electricity grids, you know, complex systems of this sort, and, and, and saying, I, I quote 
you know, uh, what I remember, uh, in any uh, other discipline, the combination of uh, interconnectedness, uh, complexity, and uniformity of behavior would have uh, sounded like very alarming. And the financial, uh, the study of financial stability lags behind what we've learned from the study of ecosystems. Um, and, uh, and therefore, there was this view that efficiency was the main objective, but the cost in terms of instability of, of, of this efficiency was neglected uh, in spite of us having learned from ecosystem that at some point there can be collapses, there can be catastrophe, or the, the electricity grid can break down, and that has to, to, to be learned. So I think that's a, that's a very valid comparison. And finally, um, let me say that I think the, this uh, kind of long uh, history uh, comparison between what is local and what is long distance is interesting. I mean, it reminded me listening to you to uh, Fernand Brodel's views about capitalism and the, and the merchant economy and saying, you know, we have to distinguish the two. Markets have existed for a very long time. Markets were serving local purposes, local exchange, but capitalism is a completely different thing. And this long distance, uh, uh, that's this, this kind of globalization creating activities that started uh, with the, the, the first, um, well, the first in interconnectedness on the, not on a world scale, but at least on a transcontinental scale, uh, was something that, uh, that changed the, the nature of the local market economy. And so that this notion that market and capitalism are just the same thing is a bit too simple in, in view of, of history. Now, that's, uh, that's the agreements. Now, wh where do I disagree? I think I disagree fundamentally on two things. One is this. I mean, your approach, that is kind of conspiracy theory of the crisis, that somehow we know the truth, but it's hidden somewhere, and that because some people have interest in, in hiding the truth. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of people have different types of interest in the system and want to preserve their interest, as, as everywhere, and, um, and this is no, 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 no surprise. Uh, but there is no, I don't think there is any hidden truth that, you know, we would know and that would be in, on purpose hidden by some institution that are extremely powerful and then prevent the citizen from, from, from learning the truth. I think that the reality is that the degree of ignorance there still is about this, uh, the causes of this crisis is, is very high. And if you look, look back at, at the, as the crisis of the, in the 1930s, I mean, we had the immediate response, the Keynesian response, but then to understand the mechanics of the crisis, we had to wait a long time before there was, uh, you know, Milton Friedman's view on, uh, on, the, on the role of the monetary policy mistakes in the crisis uh, that came in the 50s, and then uh, the, 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 the role of banks in the crisis, and that was Bernanke's uh, uh, thesis that came, you know, 50 years after the crisis. So it's a long, long, long process to go and understand through all sorts of controversies and, and confrontation and going back to data and to facts. So this has barely started. We have some controversies. I mean, we know that, as I said, there's a micro versus macro dimension, uh, and here there is, there is clearly a discussion that has started. On the micro, what I would say is that something we, we don't understand, I mean, we have very, uh, it's very difficult to understand, is why mistakes of that magnitude, which we are not, you know, things that are very sophisticated, just for first order mistakes, so many were made. Um, if you look at you know, these compensation practices, why, why do you write a contract in this way? I mean, why do you have a contract which gives the managers of the capital an interest in behaving in a way that puts us at risk the, the, the capital of the, 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 the owners of capital? Why do owners agree on it? Why do owners agree on paying people on short-term performance, uh, being known that it is a strong incentive to, to put the capital at risk, so to put their own wealth at, at risk. So you can say, well, it's a public responsibility to regulate that, but the first question is why do uh, uh, the holder of capital agree to something that is completely silly? Uh, why, uh, you know, why do you, uh, why do you agree on, uh, on uh, well, if you take the subprime uh, uh, case, why do you, uh, you know, create an in such a strong incentive to enter into credit that has no chance of being repaid, and it has been obviously demonstrated